Good evening, everybody. I am so thrilled to have you all here. Um, you're old friends, there are new friends here, and some of the dearest friends in my life. And I can't thank you enough. My colleagues, my business associates, our amazing volunteers, my wonderful family, Kent and Brendan, I love you so much. And uh, it's nice to tell everybody that and share you with them. Uh, and of course, my amazing and exquisite staff. What do you say about these people that I work with? I, I love them dearly and they do miracles every day. So I don't have enough hands to hold the number of lights in honor of people who have made it possible for this dream to come true. Thank you for being here to honor and reflect on 23 years of inspiring hope through the power of music, which has really been my vision, my passion, my purpose on the planet since I was 12 years old. So when I talk about inspired hope, it's my way of honoring the impact throughout history the arts have had on humanity. We know art's power. As you listen to Dorothy's story, you feel the depth of how music transcended that moment, that very moment of death. It was not tragic, but a beautiful legacy to the enduring and lasting love between Dorothy and her daughter. Tonight, I talk about this level of hope and the requirement that comes with it, knowing that the level of impact I wanted to create in this world meant for me to be a different kind of musician. I knew even then it required me to commit my whole life to stay in the dark times, the difficult places nobody wants to be. People don't want disease, pain, depression, injury, trauma. Yet I know, and I knew it even then, how much humanity needs hope and that we need it most throughout the darkest times. When you talk about the arts, everybody knows the immense impact that arts have had on humanity. All throughout history, art has always been there. Poetry, dance, you know, now we call it modern media. <laughs> it's everywhere. But it helps this amazing thing called create, creativity, to create an experience for something to become different. And when you do that, you develop new ways of seeing and experiencing your whole world. When you have the arts, and we need that necessity of the arts, we know that it opens new possibilities. We don't know what those possibilities are. They can go to the dark side, they can go to the light side, but it opens new possibilities. And when that happens, we develop more abstract processes, and that helps us to break out of concrete barriers, to break out of traps that were in cycles. We explore into the unknown. Maybe something else is possible but outside of what we experience in the past or even right now, helping us to see something. So that possibility really fosters in humanity an amazing curiosity and a desire for new discoveries, not only of ourself, but for others in the world and that is at the essential crux when you talk about expressive art therapies, which music therapy is kind of under the umbrella in the family of. This is one of my favorite pieces. You'll see all around the center photographs. It's by uh, my favorite photographer, artist, friend, Mike Broadway. This piece has real meaning for me. It's one that one day I want to have big and blown up on my wall in my office. Because to me, it brings light. And I love the way Mike does that. He brings light into one of humanity's darkest acts, which was genocide. The Khmer Rouge only had the power to take these children's lives. He did not create them. They did not create them. There's a more powerful force behind that, but I love to look in these children's eyes. When I look in these children's eyes, I remember, and the image of their faces is made timeless by the artist, Mike Broadway, and his piece of art. When I look at art like this, like many of us do, and we always have 
as humans. I see it, and it strengthens my commitment to inspire hope for humanity. Looking at these children, I see the spirit and their spirit in every child I work with. I see the impact of my own life and the possibility to make this world a better place. So everybody knows the power of art. We sometimes take that for granted. But in my arena, the gift that I was born into and the identity that I really developed is that of a musician. Now, I definitely say I'm a musician. With the spotlight, I can't look out in this audience and see hands go, but I want you guys to do it anyway. I love to do this. I go and I speak nationally and internationally, and I love to ask this question because I'm curious. How many of you are a musician? Raise your hand high. All right, this is a smaller audience. That's good. I, I, I knew it would be a little bit higher ratio tonight being a music therapy center and a lot of the staff are in the room. But usually I speak to about 500 or 1,000 people. And when I ask that question, about a dozen hands go up to a few dozen hands. This is a very modern notion, all right? Because historically, when you think about that question, when you think about what a musician is, historically, about 40,000 year, years ago, we humans were imitating nature sounds. We were using nature sounds before language and forming them into communication to alert danger, to um, food, hunting, gathering, mating. And then it evolved, like 20,000, 5,000 years ago, we started finding artifacts, well, we found recently, but artifacts dating 25,000 years ago of bones hollowed into flutes. So we know there was this formation of pattern and development of music. And as our time with humans, the majority of time we've spent, there wasn't a separation of the musician and an, and an audience. There was the tribe, everybody participating in music. There wasn't a separation, it was such a part of everyday life, everybody participated in it. It was a natural function, natural flow, natural identity to the whole culture. One of the things when I ask that question about are you a musician, I like to bring it back to grounded truth. Every human being is intrinsically musical. There really is no such thing as you're a musician, you're not. We're all naturally born with musicality. Matter of fact, it's one of the defining characteristics of humanity, of being human. So when you're born just naturally intrinsically human, you really are born a musician, and I'm gonna talk and lay out a hypothesis for you and see if you support me on that. So when you're naturally interested in musical, that means that you developed in the womb musicality, that process of hearing, responding to music in the second trimester of your development in your mother's womb. Matter of fact, it's one of two senses that come online, when smell and hearing in the womb, and as you pass away, like Dorothy, when Dorothy just simply I didn't say it, the, but she simply, she actually lifted her arm, turned her head, smiled, and then she died. It happens over and over again. When people aren't responding, they're still hearing. So it's one of our powerful, powerful senses. So what are some of those universal, universal characteristics of musicality? Sammy, I'm gonna ask you, Kip, I know in this room, I saw how many people raised their hands, but this is my hypothesis, that really, it's just kind of modern day notion that you're my, a mu uh, not a musician. Everybody, I want you to join in with me on this one. Let's see about rhythm, okay? Here we go. Actually, I'm gonna have to come over here. Tucker, you still got me? All right, guys. We're gonna lay down a rhythm. You guys, have the most natural instrument with you right now. It is called your body. You've got your body, you've got a chair, you've got a floor. We're gonna rock and make some rhythm. Sammy, are you there? You got it. You got it, he's there. Is he there? All right, lay down a rhythm for me. Sammy Foster, you guys. All right, everybody, there's a natural beat there. Everybody give me a little bit, hit this beat. That's 
doing that exercise, if you didn't have rhythm, you'd be dead. Your heart rate, if it's out of time, it's out of rhythm, you know there's a problem. <laughs> you know you're going to need to get some help. The melody, everybody has melody. You're born with it. Good morning. Good morning. <sighs> Good morning. <laughs> melody, pitch, it's in a lot of things that we do. Music perception is one of the most powerful things. Matter of fact, if we didn't have music perception, my hypothesis on that one is, when I talk to other researchers and therapists, is that the human species wouldn't have survived to this point without music perception. Why I say that is music perception, the idea that you can handle pitch. <laughs> 